Hey YouTube. So this is going to be a video on how to buy a subwoofer. Um, I've been waiting to do this video for quite some time. And uh, part of the reason is I, <laughs> I never found the right sub. Um, I went through a lot of subwoofers, um, returned a lot, and uh, kind of a frustrating process. You know, you think you, you go by the numbers, you go by the published frequency response, um, you go by reviews on certain sites and think, okay, I've, I've got a good one here. And then you get it home, you plug it in, and you're unimpressed. And unfortunately, that's happened to me a lot. And trying to buy based on published uh, frequency response and stuff like that, and by companies advertising and whatnot, it doesn't get you very far. And so it's taken me a while to really find something that I liked. And, I, and you know, it's frustrating, you know, when you get into a serious home theater, um, and I say serious meaning wanting to spend more than a couple of hundred dollars on speakers, um, a whole different world opens up. Um, everyone knows certain brands and everyone knows the brand I'm talking about, the brand that everybody knows, the brand that everyone thinks is the best. And hey, if you really like their stuff, I've, you know, I've owned those speakers before. Um, and uh, the reason I won't mention is I, I'm not, I'm not down to bash any particular, um, brand or anything like that. That's not what I do. I, I only do reviews on positive things. But um, I have been through that particular ringer. And um, and I was just very underwhelmed, particularly by the bass. And um, the bass is what really led me to improve my, my system. And, um, and consequently, if you're looking for particular speakers, you can find some pretty good deals on Craigslist sometimes. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get back to the subwoofer. Uh, subs are, they publish frequencies, you know, if you get a sub that goes down to 20 hertz, you're doing awesome, right? That's, that's the, the number. Sometimes they get down to, you know, 18, 17, stuff like that. Um, but publish frequency and what actual frequency output is vary quite a bit. Um, I had, uh, some speakers that I tried out that were known for being the best in the store. And um, they were good down to about 35 hertz, maybe 30. And then after that, it just really flattened out. I mean, just dropped off like a rock. Uh, and, and so I, I was kind of frustrated by that. And then what I found, <clears throat> I'll show you my little secret on YouTube. There are these videos uh, that have your frequency output on the screen so you can kind of see what your sub is actually doing. And um, if you got a smart TV or a Roku or something, or, or a PlayStation, whatever you can get YouTube on, you can go, uh, I'm gonna publish my subwoofer demo uh, playlist so that people can see it and use it. Um, it doesn't just have these frequencies on it, it's got other music on there, um, music that is particularly hard hitting, uh, stuff like E40, um, Too Short, uh, stuff like that, a lot of West Coast stuff, um, but also stuff like a double bass, old school, um, you know, it looks like a cello, but it's a double bass, stuff like that. Things that really kind of give you an idea of what your sub's doing. Um, but this is real handy for figuring out what you've got already and to kind of get an idea of what you want. Um, but back to the sub, uh, you know, my a lot of my reviews that I read the most helpful information for me came from two particular websites. One is the AVS forum, and the other is database. Um, and the AVS forum gave me a great insight on what speakers were good and which were not so good. And you can just search something, you know, if you just want to Google it, just Google the speaker you're looking at and an AVS forum, and then you'll get results of what people have to say about it. And um, that's where I kind of found where I was going wrong. Um, this particular sub that I've got here, I, I went overboard on it because, you know, you get to a point where you're just returning so many speakers and it's just getting really old. This is an HSU VTF-15. Um, it is an amazing sub. It's more than I need, but the benefit of that is 
I'll never have to go out and get another sub. Uh, it's it's doing the job exactly how I want it done. And it's not to say the HSU is the only sub that'll get it done. Um, there are others out there. Um, SVS is another one. I've never heard it myself, but I understand it's very well respected and uh, does the job quite well also. But um, so as far as buying a subwoofer, those two forums, AVS and database, are fantastic resources. Um, and they're not only good for subwoofers, of course, they're good for other speakers. Um, you can find out what other speakers might be good. Um, and the important thing is finding out what speakers are bad. Um, not necessarily bad, but just underwhelming. Um, a lot of these box stores, um, these big, big electronic stores that have everything, um, I went into one of those and uh, honestly, they didn't have anything that I heard that sounded as good as this. Um, a lot of the really good stuff is internet direct only. And part of that is because uh, what's called the wife acceptance factor. And I, that may sound kind of funny, but I'll show you what that means. Um, this is a typical folding chair. Everyone's kind of familiar with the size and whatnot. You can see that this is a pretty large subwoofer. It's big. It's not some little thing. Um, it, it, it's pretty monstrous. And the reason is because you've got uh, physics that you have to deal with. And if you want low hitting subs that don't distort, you need to have a big box. I mean, that's just that's just the deal. That's Those are the rules. And so they don't have stuff like this in here be, in, in those big box stores because they don't, I don't know, maybe it's an aesthetic thing. You know, that when I was there, the guy was trying to sell me on a completely sealed subwoofer. And, you know, it was a big name. Uh, and I listened to it and I was just kind of not underwhelmed, but not super impressed. You know what I mean? And he bragged to me about how he talked a lot of people out of buying speakers like this. And he said, oh yeah, I talk to people out of that all the time, you know, this and that, and gave me all these reasons. I'm like, okay. And the thought occurred to me, but what if they are better? <laughs> what if it is a much better speaker? So after trying a few of his speakers and returning them and dealing with a fair amount of flack for returning them, um, I just got fed up and I just started looking and tried to find, I, I was tired of, of trying different speakers out, running to the store, packing things up, unpacking it as a pain in the butt. So, and, and not to say that won't happen when you're buying a sub, it will, uh, unless you, you know, buy a really good one from the start, but, um, it was just frustrating. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to find something that's just way over, you know, way more than I need. And so I don't have to screw with it anymore. And so I, I ended up with this HSU VTF-15. And again, I, I'm not necessarily pushing this particular speaker. Um, I'm just saying it, it, what led me to this were all these different forums and doing the research, um, you know, YouTube reviews and stuff like that. They're all very helpful. Um, you can really find out what what's what, you know, what people are really happy with. Um, and, you know, when it comes to something like this, if you're new into uh, home theater and, and, you know, big sound and stuff like that, this thing right here has more adjustability than I know what to do with. Um, I really appreciate good sound. I really value it. And, but I won't go so far as to say I'm an audiophile because I, that puts you into a whole new line of scrutiny I'm not willing to deal with, <laughs> okay? but. I will say that um, I am very impressed with this, um, but uh, you know, it, it's you the, the the published frequencies. Okay, this is my biggest bugaboo. I bought a little speaker, very small, had two passive radiators in it. Passive radiators are essentially speakers without power, so they vibrate with the main with the main driver, and so and it was pretty good. Till around 35 or 30 hertz after that it kind of it still put out sound but it was more it seemed more distortion than actual quality sound um, now I'm not 
bashing those. If you know, you have the wife acceptance factor to deal with, and the size of that sub was almost the size of my front speaker. Okay, and almost exactly the same size. So it was a lot smaller, a lot easier to get that. Uh, get your spouse to be on board with it because this is this thing's a monstrosity. It's big, um, but it's. I mean, for me, the sound is worth it. My wife was very cool about it, and uh, when she heard it, she became very cool about it. Um, all of a sudden, we were into uh, gangster rap and stuff like that because we could. Uh, it wasn't bottoming out the speakers. It wasn't, you know, um, it wasn't. You didn't feel like you're going to break something. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I really like it. Um, but this speaker is advertised down to 17 hertz, and I can verify it does go down to that. It actually goes lower than that, but it starts, you know, I, the distortion really kicks up at that point. And that's really kind of the key, is that where does the distortion come in? When does it stop being a clean reproduction of sound, and when does it start just becoming noise? Because anything can vibrate you, uh, you know, but it's having the right sound, the right... Uh, just accurate reproduction of the sound. It's harder than it sounds with a subwoofer. Um, and, you know, is this the ultimate in bass? No. You can get um, two of these plus a mid bass unit and get even more. And I'm not that crazy. <laughs> this is plenty for me. Um, you know, a sub like this or uh, other HSU subs or, or say SVS or, or whatever out there is is good quality and is, and is kind of backed by the people on ABS forum. Um, they'll usually do pretty good. Um, but uh, the, the, the sound quality is, is outstanding. Um, and the, the whole frequency response thing, if it says it's rated down to 28, it's probably really good for like 35. And then, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, having a truck with a lot of horsepower when you're towing. You don't need all that horsepower when you're just driving the truck around. But when it comes to towing, when it comes to putting that big load behind the truck, it makes a difference. So you don't want something that's, you know, winding out the whole time you're, you're towing the truck. You want something that does the job and has a little to spare. And that's what happens when you listen to something that is a um, little more thunderous or a little bit more... Um, bass intensive goes down to those lower frequencies you know your your most of your subs out there will run out of air first um, and you know as far as budgets and things like that go you know like I said if you're spending just a couple hundred bucks on a set of speakers then yeah, this probably isn't the video for you and at the same time if you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on your audio setup this may not be a you know video for you either you may be looking for even bigger stuff I, I can't imagine it, but I know the possibilities out there. I know that there's some really expensive stuff out there. Um, I actually got this because it was the greatest amount of output and quality for the money. So, um, but anyway, I, I put this video up because it's really frustrating to get the wrong sub um, and get it home, be all excited about it, plug it in, and just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is not this is not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for something that was just had punch and had um, uh, you know you want something good when you spend a decent amount of money on stuff. I mean, if you're spending money on, an, on a cheap system, that's cool, but there's a lot of systems out there that are advertised for being the best and you know everybody knows this name and this name is known for being fantastic and, and the name isn't everything and um, you know, particularly in subs, particularly in, in subwoofers. You know, I, I've told people, hey, yeah, I had that brand. I didn't like it. Oh, what, really? What was the problem? Oh, the subwoofer. Really? Wow, I thought they were the best. No. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of people, if they're going out to spend like 1000 to $2,000 on a set of really nice speakers, they can get roped into buying something that doesn't sound outstanding it sounds decent you know what i mean it, it, it sounds better than you know 
uh, a lot of speakers out there, but if you're looking for real good quality, you got to look a little deeper. Um, I was frustrated to have, you know, spent that kind of money on something that was known, that was supposed to be good, that had, you know, all the clout behind it. And when I found that, you know, oh, this isn't the best, you know, I hurt my pride a little bit. <laughs> it's like, man, seriously? Um, good thing is, though, hey, that system held its resale value. Um, which is another point uh, I want to go into, and if you've watched this far, right on, appreciate it. Um, I'll give you a little nugget of information, a little little hint here. Um, if the system that you buy cannot be used in conjunction with another's part or system, that's a red flag. So what I mean by that, if you if they say, well, you can use this, but you have to use that with it, otherwise this won't work. Red flag. If they say, well, you know, this has to be used in conjunction with that. If you separate them and you try to add something out, the system won't work properly. Red flag. When you're buying components, you should be able to mix and match without issue. You should be able to put any brand subwoofer with any brand satellite, and it should be no problem. Now, granted, you may be underwhelmed or overwhelmed by certain things. You may, you know, if you get a real good subwoofer and you get some, kind of some, you know, eh, Satellites, you know, some speakers that don't sound that good, you'll notice. Um, but, you know, if, if, if it comes in an entire system, if it's easy to put together, um, you know, those are some things to watch for. Again, I'm not going to bash any companies by name, but I'm sure a lot of you have probably caught on to what brand I'm talking about. But, um, you know, anything that excludes any sort of mix and matching, I think, is kind of a red flag. But, um, anyway... That's my video on this. I um, hope you like it. Uh, and you can check out the subwoofer demo playlist on my on my YouTube page. There's a lot of uh, cool things on there. And I will give you a kind of disclaimer or, or a warning. Um, if you play some of these uh, some of these videos, uh, you may there's a good possibility you could blow out your speakers, okay, or your, your sub. So if you're running on something that you're unsure about. Uh, you may want to pass on the subwoofer demo. I, it's very possible that one of these tracks could blow out the sub. Heck, it's possible one of these tracks could blow out my sub. I mean, it's, it's entirely possible. Um, but, you know, just be forewarned. I've, I've played some stuff on my uh, playlist on someone else's system, and I flew out of the chair to turn it off <laughs> because... His sub was fluttering. It was really bad. It sounded like it was about to pop. Um, so, you know, use caution on, on these songs, um, on these tracks, because uh, a lot of them really test things out. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe. I'll, I'll try and put up more helpful videos like this. And um, feel free to comment and let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching.